Well, praise the Lord. We're, now we're involved with the, the most important part of really any service. We praise the Lord. We offer ourselves to him. But there's nothing like hearing the word of God, receiving the word of God, allowing it to change your lives, to speak to your heart, to move upon your soul, to see what the Lord has for you in all of this. So would you turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke chapter 18. The Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says this. Very simply, but yet very powerfully stated by Jesus. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Stop. There's several sermons sitting right there in that verse. Several messages sitting right there in that verse. We don't even need to go into the parable that explains what he's talking about. He's sharing a parable to explain what it is to seek the Lord and to pray and to call upon and to trust Him. And he's going to give a parable in regards to a, a widow and an unjust just or a, a judge that doesn't care really about anything other than himself. Notice what it says in verses, just for the sake of understanding, let's look at the following parable. Verse 2 saying, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. In other words, who's he living for? He's himself. So he's got position, he's got power, and the purpose of his life is what? For himself. He's living for himself. Everything he does is basically, he's not going to give regard to God, not give God re regard to man. He's basically just doing what's right in his own eyes. He's got position, he's got power. But it also says there's another character involved in all of this. Verse 3. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, notice, not to everybody around him, he said to within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? In this parable, think of all that the Lord is saying. Using an unjust judge who gives not regard to God nor regard to man gives this widow who does not have a man to fight for her, stand for her, provide for her. Consider the times, consider the culture. Consider where she doesn't have a name in herself. She's a woman and caught in a, in a so-called quote-unquote man's culture where kings ruled. And in this she has no one to stand for her and she's going to this judge who does not care for man or God and here's this widow but because she keeps coming to him, keeps presenting her case to him, keeps seeking him, why does she keep going to him? Why not go to someone else? Why not go to the neighbor down the street? Why keep going to this one? Why not keep going to that one? Why keep coming to this judge? Because he's the only one who can change her situation. She keeps going to him because he's the only one with the position and the power to change her situation. And even though he has no regard for God, and even though he has no regard for man, and even though he could care less about her situation, because she keeps coming to him, finally he says, doesn't go and announce it to everybody, doesn't tell everybody on the left and the right, doesn't tell everybody who has to what's going on, here's why I'm doing it, says within himself, reasons within himself, I'd better take care of this situation, because basically using our colloquial language of the day, she's bugging me. Because she's constantly pestering me. Because she's constantly affronting the, the altar, uh, the, the, the court. And because she keeps knocking on my door. She's pestering me to the point that I'm just going to quietly take care of this to make sure that it's settled. And basically what? That she would go away. Now you parents, maybe you've experienced this. Mom. <laughs> Maybe you've experienced that. Whereas the pestering, going after, wanting, 
desiring. The constant why. Why? 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 Till eventually you find some answer to that why question just so that they'll stop. And when all else fails, because I said so. <laughs> In this, the answer comes and says, Jesus, using this as an illustration, if the unjust judge will answer the call of a widow who keeps calling upon and knocking upon the only one, stressing that, upon the only one who has the position and the power to change the situation. Do you catch my meaning there? Do you catch what Scripture's saying there? There's only one who has the position and the power to change your situation. There's only one who has the position and the power to alter any situation or anything around you. Do you not know that there's a king in heaven who raises up kings and takes them down? Who moves nations around like you would move chess pieces? Who is the one who put his glory and his grace upon this nation we call the USA and could just as easily sweep it away? Do we not know that he's the one who put your family together and can change any situation there? Do we not know that there's a God in heaven who's not an unjust judge, but has good thoughts towards you today? Do we not know that there's a master and a father in heaven, a God almighty, who rules over all nations, who today is looking out for your benefit? But where's the qualifier? Verse 1, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. What are men supposed to do? Ladies, what are the men supposed to do? Pray. Because that's what it says, men pray. So that means the women don't have to. Right? Oh, say, yeah. Just making sure that we understand what men means here. <laughs> He's talking basically that anyone, any person, anybody, even a child, people, mankind, humanity, anybody, believers, a household of faith, if anyone, if you, he spoke this, if men always ought to pray. This is what he's calling for us to do. Have you ever noticed that what you go after, you're most likely going to get? If not get fully, then at least a portion of it. If any, anyone who's ever sought, been driven by, I have just got to have a million dollars. I've just got to have it. I'm working. That's my value. That's my identity. That's my security. I'm going after it, and I won't be happy, settled, comfortable, secure until I have one million dollars. And if that person starts dedicating their life to that one purpose, seeking after it, will they most likely get it or at least a portion of it? Most likely, they'll get it or get a portion of it. Versus the one who stays home, says, I need, I want a million dollars, sits back in the lazy boy and waits for someone to knock. <laughs> Not even the publisher's clearinghouse will knock on your door unless you sent in some application. <laughs> some sort of effort had to take place. Now let's just compare the chances. Someone who's going to seek after, dedicate their life towards, versus the one who's going to stay home and watch Wheel of Fortune and wait for them to hit their number. Which one has more of a chance to obtaining that goal? The, the worker. The one who's, what, seeking after it. Believing that they're going after it. So look at it. What are you after today? What am I after today? What are we after today? Really, what are we after? Let's not fool ourselves with spiritual answers. Because you can tell just by where you're dedicating your thought life. You can tell just by dedicating where your fears are. You can tell just by looking and saying, this is where I've been focusing my life on. This is what causes fret in my life. This is where I lose courage. This is where, what am I after? Where am I dedicating my time, my money, my, my energies, my thought life? Where, who am I hanging around with? That will tell you quick really what you're after. In all of this, he says that men always ought to pray. I've never seen anybody, I haven't, maybe you have, 
say, I need a job, and then sit back, crawl into bed, and say, and I'm going to wait for somebody to knock on my door and offer one. I need work. Todd, you need work. So go home today and sleep on it. <laughs> It'll show up. Don't advertise. Don't knock on the doors. Don't make any relationships. Just wait for God's provision versus the one who goes and stirs the bushes. Versus the one who goes out and seeks and knocks and looks for and goes after. And that person will most likely get a little bit further ahead than the one who's under the covers. There's an application process that takes place. It says in all of this that men always ought to pray. How often? Always. Oh, gee, I better buy a black robe some brown beads, a little hood, buy my sandals, and walk around all day because it says pray all day long. Always pray. What is it really saying? That you have a heart and a mind that is focused and in communication and relating with the Holy Spirit all day long. You are never outside of the fellowship of Christ Jesus. You are never outside of the communication of the Holy Spirit in your life. At the very impulse of touch of His love, you know what He wants you to do. You don't hear from God just on Sunday mornings. You hear from God all the time. You're open to His Spirit. Prayer for you is more than just getting yourself in alignment with God and expressing your mind to Him. Prayer is receiving the mind of God. Too many people today understand prayer is about getting on your knees and just spilling out all your problems. I'm going to give you, Lord, a piece of my mind. Now there's value. <laughs> Rather than, Lord, I need the mind of Christ. Which one's biblical? Getting the mind of Christ is absolutely essential. Lord, teach me, guide me, show me your mind in me, the mind of Christ, his thoughts, his character, his focus, that you are in constant communication with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has not just become part of you, he is you. That you are in him and he is in you. That the spirit of Christ is who moves you and changes you and alters you and gives you guidance and correction and admonishment and warns you and tells you what it is that he would have you to do because he sees the future. He knows your place in heaven. He recognizes who you are in Christ Jesus. He knows you in the body of Christ. He's preparing a place for you. And he's preparing you for that place. He's the one who leads you and guides you. Prayer, calling upon the Lord and getting His mind. Prayer is not about holding God hostage. It's not, prayer is not bothering with God. If you do this, I'll do that. If I do this, then most likely if I do this, He'll start doing that for me. Like what, are you sneaking up on Him? Like He doesn't know? I know that if I give this, then I know that we're not bothering with God. Do you not know that He already loves you? Holding Him hostage. As, and that's what people do. That's what people do. We hold Him hostage. You do this for me. You'd better get this done. Don't you know what I've been doing? Don't you know what I gave up? And we go through our litany, our go, go through our list, go through our complaints, go through all the things that we've done. And when we start doing that, do we not know that we're now starting to hold, trying to hold him hostage? Bothering with him? That's not prayer. Prayer seeks to build a relationship with God. He doesn't work for us. We're not holding him hostage. We're not seeking to manipulate him. We're not seeking to maneuver him. We're not seeking to get him to start thinking our way. We're not getting him to start trying to treat me nicer. Do you not know I've been going through a lot and shouldn't you be treating me nicer? That's not prayer. That's complaining. That's whining. 
That's maneuvering. That's manipulation. And the Bible tells us to pray, to be in communication with God, to get the mind of Christ, not spilling your mind into him, though sometimes that you'll do that. I do that and come to the Lord and just declare myself to him and pour myself out to him. But it doesn't mean that all of a sudden I get up and leave it there, but I'm ready to receive his correction, his instruction, his leading, his guiding. I want my thoughts to be his thoughts, his thoughts, my thoughts, to be two as in one. We want to be in prayer, in communication with who he is, so that when we pray, men ought to pray. That means that we're coming together and becoming one with him. That we deny ourselves, that we deny the old thoughts, we deny our own standards, we deny traditions, we deny family that's trying to hinder us and maneuver us and old friends and all kinds of traditions and family ways and instead we know we're of the household of God and I need his mind in my life. That's what prayer, calling upon the Lord so that you begin praying with the mind of the Lord. That's where, regardless whether you're driving a truck, whether you're picking up trash, whether you're banging nails, whether you're in an excavator, whether you're underneath a car turning a wrench, doesn't matter whether you're raking leaves, you've got your hand in the dishes, got your hand in the diapers, doesn't matter where you are, that you've got the mind of the Lord. Amen. So that it doesn't matter what you're doing. No matter how menial the task may seem in the natural man, no matter how menial and minuscule it might seem to you, that you recognize that you are doing it as unto the Lord, that it takes on eternal significance because you are giving that little glass of water even to and unto the name of the Lord. Because you've been in prayer with Him. Men ought to always pray. Everyone in this room has some sort of condition, some sort of situation, some sort of family difficulty or friend difficulty or circumstance, or even in the church, someone said something, did something, a pastor or this or what. Well, I'm sure not the pastor, but somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Saying something, doing something, leading, causing some sort of pain, something in your past, something that you're fearful of the future, something. So what are we going to do about it? Cast your burdens to the Lord. Get his mind. He all of a sudden becomes your all in all, that you're not any longer driven by what's the other part of this verse, losing heart. Discouragement. Spiritlessness. Uninspired, utterly inspired spirit. You just have a I'm giving up mentality. I quit. I remember the day when I was saved like about four or five months and I had had it with this whole thing of Christ in me. I had reached the point where I had had it with Christ in me. Sadly to say, this was my thought pattern. If I'm so bad, fellowship with yourself. That was my thought pattern. Don't realize how nasty that is till you reach where I am today. But when I was there, I was dead serious. You mean I'm so bad? And he's waiting for me to hear, yes, that you needed a savior? That you needed to change your life? Because I didn't see my pride, I didn't see my lust, I didn't see my envies, I didn't see my jealousies, I didn't see my waywardness, I didn't see my lack of faith, I didn't see my insecurity, I didn't see my frets, I didn't see my fears. He saw all of that, and all I saw was pride saying, am I so bad? Yes, is the answer. But I couldn't see that. Didn't understand that. But prayer, going to the Lord in prayer, seeking the Lord, and started to show me and unravel that matrix of sin and character flaws in my life, and maneuvering and reestablishing on the new and mortifying the old. Difficult. Worth it. But it did not come except by prayer. Seeking the Lord. Listening for His voice. Being obedient to His call. Hearing what He wanted me to do. To say, to overcome, to think about, to read. Prayer is where it's all about. If not, what's the alternative? Losing heart. Getting faint hearted. Do you know why many people today are uninspired in their spirit? Do you know why many people today are faint-hearted? 
Do you know why many people today are filled with frets? Do you know why many people today have anxiety in their hearts? Do you know that anxiety is the, one of the number one causes of problems in the American culture? That's leading to everyone to seek the pharmacy rather than the father? Do you know that fears and frets are around throughout all the church? Do you know that people are afraid to let go and seek the Lord? Do you know why people are filled with all kinds of depression? Do you know why frustration is in the church world? Do you know why aggravation is in the home and aggravation is in our world? Do you know why all of a sudden we have all kinds of argumentation and outburst of wrath? Do you know why all of these things are taking place even in the church world? Because something's missing. Prayer. Men ought to pray always. Calling upon the Lord and being in communication with Him gives you courage. The whole idea of becoming faint-hearted, weak in your spirit, losing courage, it, what, it's, it's the very thing in our culture, in all of the world, in all of humanity's history. One of the things that people go to the alcohol bottle for is to gain courage. To help them to become that person that they really want to be. To let them let loose. To give them some sort of strength into their being where they can just kind of be happy and enjoy life and be themselves. To help them to overcome their inhibitions. That's why they even call the liquor bottle spirits. Courage. Gives courage. The courage to do something. Even in the movies and TV shows before the gunslinger steps out into the street. True? Why? <laughs> Courage. Courage. How can a guy who's basically weak in life all of a sudden come home and be tough all around his wife and throw her around and throw the kids and tough and... Courage. All of a sudden you can speak your mind. But there's only one thing that gives courage. There's only one thing that truly gives a boldness deep in the soul. There's only one thing that helps a person to seek peace with all men. There's only one thing that causes us to have a relationship with the Lord. There's only one thing that moves us to help us to overcome all of the difficulties and temptations that are all the world. There's only one thing that helps us to get past anxiety and fretful spirit. There's only one thing that helps us to overcome the stress of life, and that is prayer. That's usually when someone may say, well, I prayed this morning, or I came to Monday night prayer. Yes, but are you a prayerful person? Are you praying always in, are you hearing who he is in your life? Are you getting up in the middle of the night and thinking, Jesus? Are you getting up in the morning or in the middle of a difficult situation? What's the first thing that comes to your mouth? A curse word or Holy Spirit help me? What's the first thing that comes out of our mouth when someone cuts you off or when somebody didn't do something or outburst of wrath, rage, argument, they should, or Holy Spirit, put your peace in my life. Holy Spirit, bless them. Holy Spirit, when you start calling about the Spirit of Christ, Jesus, be in my life. Show me thy way, O Lord. Prayer is the absolute key and Jesus even gave a parable because you have decided to put your trust in him. Prayer declares by default that you have put your trust in him. He's the only one who has the position and the power to change the situation. You recognize even like he gives the widow going to the unjust judge that he is the only one who has the position and the power to seek your change in your life. You're going to go after him. You're going to look for him. Lord, you have the position and you have the power. I am going to seek the Lord. I'm not going to grow weary, faint-hearted. I'm not going to allow myself to get into argumentation and frustration and antsiness and anxiety and stress. Everyone in this room, everyone in this room, kids alike, have all experienced stress in their life. Is there anybody in this room who has not had any stress in their life? Stress. Stress comes. If you haven't had any, we're going to pray that you get it because you won't grow up without it. Stress is what causes you to either pray 
or faint. Because if you still got a lot of it and it's still, then because there's a prayer issue. It's time to seek the Lord. I need prayer. I need the Lord. Because if we just say, yeah, that's just my life, or that's this person, or that, or I've got prayer, or I've got misery, or this and that, stress, anxiety, antsy, I've still got all this going on, and, and what, God's not hearing you? Or is God, what, doing something in you, after something in you? And I can assure you of this, it probably has something to do with grow up, mature, become who He would have you to be, become stable in who He is. Come to realize that you can't pinch every penny. You can't control everyone around you. We, I have seen people, you can't even control the kids around you. And you want to control everybody else's families. Instead of realizing that God Almighty is the one who's God and we're not. In this, we start realizing that there is a God in heaven. He's got the position and he's got the power. I'm going to him. And if circumstances, Lord, start with me. Situations, start with me. Character flaws, start with me. Love issues, holiness issues, character issues, faith issues. I can assure you of this. If you're still stuck in it, most likely you're not praying. There's a prayer issue. There's a lack of communication issue with the Lord. You just want it to happen. Gee, I read a verse this week. Why didn't God do something? Gee, I read the whole Psalm 23, David. I read the whole thing. Really, how's it begin? Yeah, I, I remember. But I sure would like God to move on my situation because I've been dealing with this and they've been dealing with that. Oh, now we know where your spirit is. You've just been revealed. The very argument you're using reveals what your problem is. Instead of realizing that God Almighty is the one who wants to change you before he changes everything around you. Anxiety is around. Anciness is around. Discouragement is around. Depression is around. Frustration is around. Difficulties are around. Fears are around. Stress is around. Frets are around. Discouragement is everywhere. Dismayed, distraught. How many words are there out there to describe humanity's plight? So, are you going to live there? Are you going to keep contending with it, dealing with it, difficulty with it, or... How about if we start getting a communication with God and say, change my heart, oh God. Are we going to be godly or grumpy? Are we going to be people of courage or complaining? Are we going to be people of power or pouting? Are we going to be people of might or misery? Are we going to be people of being better or bitter? Are we going to be people of victory or victims? Is there not a choice that's laid before us? And even when scripture begins and says, ought to. Do you sense even the tension that exists in your own heart and spirit? Ought to. Men always ought to. When caught with the difficulty, a decision before you, a, a this way or that way, I don't know what to do. Men always ought to. So, people dealing, I don't understand why God is. Really? How much have you prayed on it? It's amazing how many people have questions that aren't praying. It's amazing how many people have problems and chaos and confusion and difficulty and character flaws and weaknesses and, because they're refusing to pray. Why? Not in prayerful contact with him. Why? Because know, they know, you know. And you know, anybody you talk to, you know God's going to start changing their lives. Prayer changes lives. Prayer, how many people on the prayer team have you noticed that God changes things? Huh? How many have noticed that he starts oftentimes with you? He starts with us. He moves upon us. We want to change and see the communities around us to come to be godly and righteous and filled with the, with the mercy of God. But will he change all the communities unless, first of all, we ourselves want to change? Will he not start in the household of faith? Will he not start with our own lives of saying, Lord, me, start with me? Will he change all of our families if we ourselves are still caught up in pouting and complaining? 
If we're still caught up in jealousy and stinginess, will he all of a sudden cause others to give? He's going to start with us. Men always ought to pray. Think of the alternative. Losing heart. Losing courage. Losing boldness. Losing strength. No longer able to stand. Getting, getting all of a sudden just weary. Tired in spirit. No longer have any fight in you. If you've ever seen a boxing match or when a person loses the will to fight, they're done for. No matter how much training, no matter how good they are, no matter how much the talent, when they've lost the will to fight, they're done. Prayer gives you the fight. This inspired, ignited spirit to want to stand fast in the faith. The ignited, inspired spirit to move on into the walk of God. To be able to look past your left and your right and all things behind you. To be able to look past natural man and natural order of things. And to be able to start realizing that God Almighty is inspiring me to move forward in Him. Lord, the power of your love is the key. When we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Do we not recognize immediately the relationship of our Father in heaven? The Father's love in us will move you to want to know him more. It's no longer filled with anxiety. It's no longer moved with stress. Prayer is an energy maker. Not an energy taker. Prayer is an energy maker. Not an energy taker. Look in your own families of who is. Those even in this body you could tell. Those who are faint hearted. Those who are losing heart. Those who are just giving up. Those who aren't growing. Those who are just. And you'll find that there's a prayerful issue. Something's not clicking. But when all of a sudden somebody starts getting inspired, starts looking to the Lord, starts allowing God to move upon their lives, starts hearing from God, starts obeying what He says and leads them, all of a sudden you start being led from this into this into this. Don't lose heart over your future. Don't lose heart over what's taken place. Don't lose heart over family issues. Don't lose heart over the world's events. Don't lose heart of what's going on in your own life. Don't lose heart. Don't become uninspired. But instead, today, become a person who's praying, seeking the Lord, looking for what God has. This message, men ought to always pray and not lose heart. Always. Lord, I'm yours. My wife and I have been in some nasty situations in time past. People said things, did things, worked behind, undermined. All kinds of difficult situations in neighborhoods, family, friends, all kinds of things. But in and all, I can assure you of this. When you look to the Lord, when you go to prayer, when you fall to your knees, is, you know, you have less chance of stumbling when you're on your knees. You have, you have an ability to call upon the very throne room of God and saying, Lord, you're my God and I'm yours. Work your way in me. Give me an ear to hear. Give me a heart that yields. Help me, Lord Jesus, to live for you. Men ought to always pray. Ought to always pray. Prayer is discerning the mind of God. All of a sudden you're falling, finding yourself that God Almighty is speaking to me. Think of it, saints of God. God Almighty is speaking to me. God Almighty is showing me. God Almighty is calling for me to obey and do this point. Well, I was sick or I had something come up or a phone call. Get past the excuses and get into obeying. Get into yielding. Get into submitting. We don't want to hear all the excuses. He knows them all and I'm not interested. In this, let's get going with what God really has for us. Believe God. Trust Him. Prayer says that I trust Him. Prayer says that I believe God. Let's pray. Prayer. Family prayer. 
Family situations, prayer, coming together, praying together, eating together, enjoying a fellowship around the dinner table, praying together, time spent sharing together. Do you not know that when you do that, someone else is joining you? Body of believers gathering together for a holiday banquet. What are we doing? Praying together, getting to know one another, knowing there's a God in heaven here among us. Praying together. When we come together and I say, these people pray, these people pray, let's pray at the altar. What are we doing? Changing lives. Building courage. You can do this. For the Bible itself says, Paul himself said, I can do all things through Christ who will strengthen me. Prayer. All things. How many things? All things. That doesn't mean if I go to prayer, God's going to make me a great piano player. But if you're praying, he'll sure help you endure it. God will move upon our lives and deliver us from us and deliver us from all of the world's temptations and put your eyes on the kingdom. Men ought to always pray and not lose heart. It can't be said more simply. Jesus expressed it in Scripture quite simply, quite powerfully. And in this, now, which one do you want? Ought to pray. I'm going to be a person who's praying and seeking the Lord. I'm going to just allow myself to get faint-hearted, weaker, anemic. Anemic faith goes nowhere. Anemic faith provides no energy. Anemic faith provides no life. You want life. Life. Ignition. Where you come in in the very presence that you have a word for someone. You have a, how are you doing? Great. How come you're always doing great? Consider the alternative. How are you doing? Good. How come you're doing good? Consider the alternative. How are you doing? Free in Christ. How can you be free in Christ? Truth has set me free. How'd you get that? Prayer. Consider the alternative that if you're walking with your feet dragging and barely dealing in problems at home and problems at work and struggle and stress and anxiety and oh, Lord, won't you just come and deliver, oh, me. But all of a sudden when you're praying and you're in your communication and, you're, and you got, when you've got burdens, it's burdens for others. That you've got burdens as, Lord, help them to mature, help them to overcome, help them to become part. Let the love of God come into their lives. The love of God starts maneuvering. Holiness starts arising. Old man starts going. You start speaking faith. When all of a sudden somebody's coming and they're dumping all their complaints and all the problems they're all dealing with and they're complaining and crying and whining and murmuring and instead it's, do you not know that there's a God in heaven who loves you? Let him do his work in your life. Let's pray. And you believe God. And you pray over your house and you pray over your thresholds. And you get on your knees and you read your Bible and you say, Lord, speak to me. Change me. Move upon me. Put your promise and your purpose in my life. You begin to believe God. You begin to believe God. And when you begin to believe God, you start arising and you start becoming and boldness kicks in. And he baptizes you with the Spirit and more boldness comes in. And you start praising him and he starts delivering you and you start praising him. And he starts leading you and you start praising him and you pray and you encourage others. And when you all of a sudden start seeing answers to prayer around you, when you prayed for someone at the altar and they come to you afterwards, and say, that's exactly what I needed. It emboldens you all of a sudden to pray again for someone. And you start saying to someone else, Believe God and pray for God and the kingdom is coming and believe God. And it's amazing what happens in your life where you actually start standing up and you actually start walking towards God and you actually start running towards God and it won't realize before you're like little David going against the Goliath saying, give me that head. You'll believe him. Any person in this room, no more counseling. No, just... <laughs> Because really, what does it come down to? We'll meet once, you tell me all your problems, and what am I going to tell you? Let's pray. The next time, if it's the same thing, guess what you haven't been doing? People don't have problem issues, you have prayer issues. 
It's a lack of believing God and you're looking to mommy, daddy, grandpa, grandma, president, world issues, pastor, people around you. Why doesn't people love me? How come people can't love me? Why oh, doesn't anybody love me? Quit asking the question. Just stop asking the question and realize, don't you love him? Don't you love God? Isn't God enough for you? Don't you want him in your life? It'd be amazing what he'll do in your life. How come little kids can go to moms and dads and say, well, let's pray about it? And you go, ha, yeah, like that's going to do anything. You don't want to tell them that because you want to train them up in the faith. But why did that little boy and that little girl think about it rather than you? Why didn't you come together with family prayer rather than worrying about all the bills? I've taken all of the bills one time, put them on the table, and said, Lord, they're yours. I don't know what to do. Would you show me? I've seen people caught up in all kinds of financial issues that, how come I can't pay, when they're spending more money at Dunkin' Donuts than here at the church? Amazing to me. You don't have any right to be talking about financial issues. Because you're not willing to even deny yourself a little fast food restaurant and a Dunkin' Donuts coffee once a day. When you think what you could do with that? How come my family's this way and that way when you don't even come together and eat at the table together? And pray. Well, you know, I, yeah, we already know. Do you know? Prayer. I believe God. I believe that when I speak, call upon, he said he hears, I believe him. He said he helps, I believe him. And when I pray, I'm leaving it into his capable hands. And I'm willing to say, Lord, do something wonderful in my life. Change me to become mighty in you, in Jesus' name. If anybody wants that, if that's what you want, you don't have to fool anybody and stand if you don't want to. Because you're just fooling. But if that's really where you're at and what you want, yes, prayerful person, put your love in my heart. I, I'm going to ask that you really would stand before him. Be a witness to everybody else. Don't play a game. Don't play a game. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want God in my life like never before. I want this to be a deciding moment in my walk with God that I am no longer losing heart. I don't want to go faint-hearted. If it comes and speaks to me and tries to draw me away, I'm not going down that road. Will it come and speak? Absolutely. Do you have to take that path of travel? No. You can go to your knees and pray. You can be in your truck and pray. You can be at the dinner table and pray. You can be in... Last night I went laid down in my bed. Just about 10, 15, 10, 20. And for about 45 minutes to an hour till I fell asleep, just dwelt on this message. Just thought on God. Thought about God's goodness. Thought about just processing. Just enjoying... The, my mind in him and his mind in me. Relaxing, knowing, praying for certain ones. Glad you're here. <clears throat> praying for certain ones that God would stir your hearts. Praying for people. Deliverance, maturity, overcoming, giving, over, helping God, calling upon God in your family. Praying, believing God. Why? Because he's the only one with the position and the power to change my situation. More importantly, he is not the unjust judge. He is the righteous judge. And he says he's for me, not against me. He says he loves me with an everlasting love. He says he'll never leave me or forsake me. And I'm standing up and I want to be identified with him. And I don't want to do it just here in this room where I can feel more comfortable. I want to do it where God is not recognized or known or cared for. I want to stand in my spirit in my home. I want to stand for you, Lord. I want your love to be in my life. I want your holiness, your righteousness. I want to be able to be a prayerful person. I want to be a person who prays even when that person rolls their eyes. I want to be able to still believe God. Even when they give me a scornful look. I want to be able to pray over my job site. I want to be able to pray over my truck. I want to be able to pray over my home and my finances. I'm willing to lift everything up and put it on the table and say, Lord, I'm yours. And even though I don't see it, my faith arises and I know it's so. You said it's so. And I believe it. Now that's faith. If God's not moving fast enough for you, 
start moving towards Him faster. If God's not moving fast enough for you, start moving towards Him faster. Because He said, when you draw close to Him, He'll draw close to you. Seek Him with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. and all your ways acknowledge Him. He will direct your path in Jesus' name. In His love. Father, I pray that every person that is standing before you, humbles their heart before you, builds an altar in their inner man, and lays themselves down as a living sacrifice, and says, I'm yours. Lord, that they truly would be today, starting today, a prayerful person. Not just praying long words and sentences like the Pharisees. Not just mouthing great words and all kinds of things to flatter those around them. But Lord, truly, a prayerful person person that is in constant communication with the Holy Spirit and they believe God. That they would be willing to offer all and everything to you just as you did for us. And Lord, those who have not stood and I haven't looked so I'm not speaking to anybody in particular. But Lord, anyone who has not stood and decided to sit, Lord I pray for the strength of your conviction to come upon them in such a way that you would change their lives forever. And they would become, Lord, a believer that surpasses anything they've known in time past. Your faith in their lives to believe God. In Jesus' name. And the saints of God that he has gathered here at Merrimack Valley Church all said, Amen. Amen. God's great blessing upon you. May he continue to lead you, guide you, and empower you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.